Hello fellow plot questers, it is Iron the Plot Quester and today I have got Politics by Aristotle. Today I'll be kind of focusing on the first uh, two chapters of uh, of this book and kind of talking about how about the slavery parts in politics and how Aristotle justifies it, my arguments against it, and then why what I think we should kind of see it as in terms of modern society. Because I don't want to do the whole book man, it's the thing is huge and it talks about basically the best country possible in Aristotle's mind. But that takes too long. I want to focus on this and it's quite interesting. So let's get right into it. Now, Aristotle says slavery is justified and he sees it as the difference between the mind and the body. The body does the physical stuff because the body can't think for itself and the mind thinks and gives commands. And that's why he kind of suggests the concept of natural slaves, people who don't have the intellect or the intellectual capacity to talk and make decisions and think for their own selves. Therefore, it is safer for these people to become slaves and serve under masters who are capable of such intellectual feats. And of course, that would indeed be ideal. However, at the time and forever, slavery was never really like that. Even Aristotle, within this book, Aristotle kind of disagrees against enslaving intellectual or sentient beings that are humans and that are that aren't born to be slaves. However, that just isn't the case. A lot of slaves are war slaves. There are war criminals. There's criminals. There's um, war prisoners, etc., etc. Those kind of people are made slaves. Not you know people who don't have the intellectual capacity to make decisions for themselves. If that was the case, 60% of the upper class would already have been slaves, which would have been an interesting sight to see, but it's true. And um, in my, so number one, I'm gonna disagree against Aristotle's opinion. Then number two, I'm gonna explain why Aristotle made this kind of statement and how we should kind of see it in modern society terms. So part two now. So why I disagree with Aristotle is that even if even if um, these people, first of all, first of all, most people aren't born to be slaves. Every person is has the potential to have to become intellectual because intellect and being smart comes from practice. It comes from young age reading. It comes from many other factors in the world. Of course, talent takes, takes a part of it, but there isn't anyone who's really born to be a slave. Even if, let's say, that we go that people who do have the IQ of under 100 needs to become a slave or something, that's still ridiculous because a slave means they don't get paid and they don't really get treated humanely most of the time. This is dependent on their master, but it's really too big of a gamble, right? So in, a, in, in, a, in my opinion, Aristotle's statement is actually way too idealistic, a very idealistic view of the slave trade, and honestly is not realistic at all. I don't, I don't even know if Aristotle himself could have done this. It would have been hard for one man, even with the guy that came up with it to do it. I don't get how the entire world or this country that he's creating, the ideal country within politics, is supposed to do it with throughout the city without really, really tough regulations, which is another problem on its own because that kind of sets foot into dystopian territory, which is not something we want. Third, what should we, how should we look at this in modern society views? I think that what Aristotle kind of said is awfully similar to what we consider a, the uh, talent-based society. But what, but what, what, does, what do I mean by that? By that, I mean, in our society, if you have talent and if you're good at something, you go up. If you're pretty bad and you can't really do anything, then you do physical labor. Of course, factors decide these abilities. However, that's how it is. If you're good at this, you do that. If you're bad at that, you don't do that. And that's how our society works. If you have skills, that are great, that are really good for the current society, like for example, you're an electrician or a computer de software designer, then you go up on the hierarchy of social ranks. And that, I think the base of that is what Aristotle has suggested here with the slavery example. 
slaves, born slaves, although I am doubtful that such people exist. I mean, if they do, they're the minimum. They're a minority, very small minority. And let's say that these people aren't capable. They aren't capable of thinking for themselves, like Aristotle says. Then in our world, that would translate to these people aren't smart enough to become a lawyer. They aren't smart enough to become a doctor or work at a store. Because of that, they need to use their bodies and they need to work at an, uh, a construction site. They need to do physical labor. And that's kind of the answer. And that's no, not the answer, but that's kind of like a modern version of what Aristotle is actually saying. So when you first read, you can't just say, oh, slavery, that's ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. Of course it is. This is written like 2,000 years ago. But what we do need to kind of think about is that what if we translate this perception into a more modern view? And the answer that I got was our ability-based society, where if you have good abilities that fit society, you get richer and you climb the social ladder. If you don't, then you go down and do physical labor. That's how our society, unfortunately, is formed, and that's how our capital society runs, for profit. And because of that, I think that we can't really just say that Aristotle's entire thing is ridiculous because it's exactly what's happening right now. Although I highly doubt that Aristotle's version of this, because it's quite an idealistic print of this society, can ever be truly created on Earth because humans are way too corruptible for that, including me. I think that the idea itself is quite quaint and it's very nice to think about and I just think it's a smart idea and it really shows how ingenious Aristotle was because in fact 2000 years later something incredibly similar although we don't take the rights of the people who become physical laborers or we don't do anything like that because slavery is banned even though we do ensure the basic rights of these people they still are at the bottom of the social ladder if they don't have the ability to think, as it is said in Aristotle's version. So here, before I end off, I think we should ask ourselves the question. This ability-based society, this capitalist society that we all live in and we're very used to, we, we study a lot and try to get a good job to climb the social ladder. That's how our lives, a lot of people's lives are shown. We need to think that if someone in the future looks at it, like we look at Aristotle's version of like slavery, would they think that this ability-based society is ridiculous, that it's unfair, that's, that it's unjust, the same way that we see Aristotle's stance on slavery is right now? It's interesting to think about. And with that, let's end it off. Like always, your plot quester and a plot quester. Have a great day and have a think about it. You know, slavery, slavery and what, and ability-based society, capitalist society, and what future people will think about right now. Would it be any same, any different, I mean, from slavery 